What's up guys, it's Eventon here, and before we get into the topic of this video, I will actually be doing this skin giveaway, or at least announcing the winners. So I did get the skins from CCP, um, full transparency, so how it works is every month CCP gives me 20 skins, or at least he, they give me 20 codes to redeem for skins, and so a lot of content creators do it differently. Some of them like to send out the code to the people directly via like in-game mail or through Discord or whatever it is. Um, I'm not exactly, at least for me personally, I'm not exactly comfortable with that because other people can intercept it, especially in in-game mail. Uh, there are ways people can kind of find out or be able to retrieve it. So what I did was I just claimed all 20 of the skins. I put them all in a box, literally just called scope skins. So they're literally just in a box in Jita. And I will just contract these out to you guys directly based on your in-game name. So uh, I felt like that's a bit safer. And plus, it's a little bit easier for me to know which skins have actually gotten redeemed um, or like which codes have been redeemed and things like that. So uh, I think how I'm going to do is um, for like the skin giveaways is I think at the beginning of the month, I'll be giving away a, a pretty good amount of them because that's going to that's when the most hype is going to be happening. So that's typically where you're going to get the best price if you're trying to sell it. Uh, especially I'm doing them in Jita. So you guys can actually remotely acquire the skin. So it doesn't matter where you are in New Eden. If you do win the skin um, like contest or like the giveaway, you can always apply it. doesn't matter where you are. But if you're looking to sell it, Jita is the best place because that's where all the best buy and sell orders are. Um, so I'm going to be doing it this way. But as the month goes on, I'll probably taper it off. I do want to be able to actually give away these Caracol skins like six, seven, eight, you know, nine months from now. And I think it'll be really interesting that much, much later, we're actually giving away a variety of skins instead of just dumping 80% of them all in one month onto the market, driving down the price. And I think, uh, who knows, Caracol, they, these Caracol skins could be worth much, much more, two, three, four times more in like six, seven months when they're much, much more rare. So I think it's to your guys' benefit uh, overall. Plus there's tons of other content creators giving away skins. So you guys are gonna have a lot of opportunities uh, to claim them. So here they are in a box. I'm gonna keep adding these as we go along. I'll be making videos on how big the box is gonna get. So. Um, we're gonna go ahead and announce the winners. And so I'm gonna actually set this up. So full transparency, how this is gonna work. There's a variety of different uh, websites. There is one that I like using, but it's down, honestly down right now, which kind of sucks. So, uh, but this does the exact same thing. So what you do is just, I'm gonna copy and paste the YouTube URL here. So what's gonna do is just pull all the comments from that video. It's gonna say filter duplicates, replies, and all that stuff. So you won't have more chances to win if you if you make multiple replies to my videos. Uh, obviously, I encourage it just to help out with the algorithm and kind of encourage community talk, uh, included replies and all that stuff. So all this stuff is turned off. So everyone has an equal opportunity uh, to win these skins. So we're actually going to get the YouTube comments. And so overall, we had 35 unique comments from different people. And here we're going to go ahead and start the raffle. And so for the first winner, we are going to have deft squirrel so deft uh ozwara sorry if i mispronounced that so bizarre unique uh ship fits random uses learning pvp chill mining fleet and all that stuff so congrats deft squirrel on winning a skin um honestly for the there's a lot of really good uh feedback and recommendations and suggestions and stuff uh, i will say it does sound like a pvp series is in order so i will be doing that um pretty soon because that seemed to be very popular i think like over half the comments recommended uh some pvp content I think the next most popular was PVE, so mission running, um, abyssal stuff, uh, exploration, things like that. And probably the next most like most commented one, which kind of surprised me, which is like the discussion videos. Some of the more long-winded videos, which I can already tell this video is going to be a bit long because I'm talking about the fits as well as some other stuff uh, related to this topic. So um, congrats, Def Squirrel. And you know what? We'll go ahead and pick another winner. We might as well just because it's early in the month. And Jacob, congrats, man, uh, on winning this game. We'd like to see some small game PVP as well as solo if that's possible. Fitting guides are always nice, good videos as well. My end game names is Charles uh, Bellamy. So congrats to Jacob uh, as well as the other guy uh, on winning the Caracol Scope Syndicate skins. Uh, I'll record that at the end of this video showing me uh, sending you guys the contract for the skins. All right, and finally on to the topic of this video, which is I actually managed to make a level four mission runner for under 100 million ISK. Uh, we are using the Vexor Navy issue for a variety of different reasons. First off, it's just a great ship and really inexpensive. It has really good bonuses, uh, but more importantly, this is also an alpha ship. So uh, I realize you can't run <laughs> level four missions as an alpha character, but if you can run these in level fours, you could definitely run these in level three missions. So for some of you alpha characters out there, you guys can still run this exact same fit for level threes. Um, and even if you recently upgraded to Omega and you don't have all the skills yet, you can still use the same ship uh, in level fours. But of course, 
it will take you a bit longer. Um, your drone damage is going to be lower. Your tank, your speed, all that stuff will be a bit lower. But um, you can still run this stuff nonetheless. Uh, the main reason why I wanted to do this was I really wanted to just challenge myself and really push the limits of uh, what you're capable of doing uh, in a level four mission. So in this case, uh, we're pretty much just through blitzing potential and all that stuff out the window. I really wanted to lower the bar when it came to skills required, uh, as well as ISK required to be able to run level four missions, So, which this ship is able to do. So we'll go ahead and look at the fit. All right, now on to the fit. So I had to make a couple adjustments for the alpha characters. Uh, this isn't the exact fit I'm running, but it's very, very similar. Uh, I did remember that the alpha characters only have power grid four and they have capacitor system operations three, as well as like cap management four. So long story short, alpha characters, when you're running this fit, it's going to say up here in the top right, you only have like three to four minutes of cap stability. Um, you can offset this by using an implant, like maybe a plus 3% implant, like the tier three version, whatever you want to call it. Um, will make you cap stable, but honestly, it's not really needed. If you turn off this armor repair, it will be cap stable. I've only had to turn this on for 30 seconds to maybe a minute, and that's usually only if I'm like in an awkward orbit or there's some ships focusing me really hard and I use the drones and eventually I kill them, then all of a sudden I'm back to just dodging everything. So uh, you alpha characters, if it's not cap stable, that's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it because, um, again, if you turn this off, you will be cap stable. We'll go ahead and start with the drones. Um, Right now, I put in basically two groups of drones. I basically put in kinetic and thermal drones. And the reason for that is because every single pirate type in the game, or like no matter what you're fighting in these missions, they're always gonna be weak to either kinetic or thermal. Whether it's a primary or secondary thing, um, you're always gonna at least be able to hit some sort of resist hole with these two different types of drones. So when you first start this, it's probably gonna def default to something like this. It's gonna assume you're gonna wanna use um, just three heavy drones, which is not the case. We're actually gonna be able to push more damage by using two heavies, two mediums, and one light drone. So that's actually gonna give us the maximum damage and utilize uh, this drone bandwidth as much as possible. I've tried using three heavies, I've tried using five mediums and a bunch of different variations. This is always what's gonna give you uh, the highest DPS. It is a bit awkward using a combination of all three, but like I said, this is always what's gonna push the, the highest DPS uh, for the most part. So again, uh, we're using the faction drones because again this is an alpha character but for omegas if you can run t3s in here that's definitely going to help you push more damage on to the high slots we are running two drone link augment or ones again i try my best to keep everything literally tier one or meta modules and so as far as i know none of these modules or like none of the skills on this thing require like five out of five so as long as you have four out of five and most of your skills you should be fine um so the drone link augmenter ones, again, uh, my range is super far because I have high skills and I'm Omega, but for some of you alpha characters or maybe Omegas that don't have as high as skills, this could be like in the, the mid eighties or like low eighties, something like that. Uh, it does outrange our targeting, but that's perfectly fine. Cause that, all that means is that's how far our, our drone auto aggro range is. So if something is shooting us at, um, 70,000 kilometers, it's not that big of a deal because as long as our drones can reach it, uh, that's fine. It's just going to auto aggro and just shoot them down. The auto targeting system, again, is just to increase the amount of targets we can lock onto, especially since some of these missions do have a lot of ships flying around. Uh, we just wanna make it easier for ourselves to tell our drones where to go. On the right side, uh, we have a drone navigation computer one. What this is gonna do is increase the speed of our drones to basically jump from target to target or be able to leave our ship. So this is just gonna increase our DPS overall, especially the heavy drones, which are super, super slow. Uh, I added a meta uh, AML compact omnidirectional tracking link uh, with a tracking script. So what this is gonna do is just help mainly our heavy drones and medium drones hit smaller targets, increasing our DPS. Um, yeah, so we just wanna make sure we're pushing as much damage as possible uh, with that module. Uh, the compact afterburner, 100 MN. Uh, the reason why we're running the compact version is just because it just simply saves us the most room possible in like the power grid and CPU. Uh, and it also keeps our speed very, very high. And again, for alpha characters, this might be a little bit lower. My skills are a bit higher. And a large compact acid cap battery. So again, trying to keep everything meta. I didn't want to spend too much money on the uh, battery, but you can upgrade this as a alpha character in Omega. Uh, same thing with Omegas. You can upgrade the drone nav. You can upgrade this. Um, you will have to fiddle around with some of this stuff a little bit, but you can upgrade this to 100 MN, like a tier two version. Um, down here in the bottom, we're running three drone uh, damage amplifiers. 
We're also running a compact armor repair. This is mainly just so we could actually squeeze it into the alpha accounts because the alpha accounts, if we run a T2 version, it just simply won't fit um, as with that. So this is the only way we can make it fit for alphas. But even then, I mean, healing for 474 HP is a pretty good amount. So we're, we're healing for roughly uh, one eighth of our health every cycle. Um, like I said before, I've only had to run this for like 30, 30 seconds to maybe a minute in really hairy situations. Uh, a compact version, uh, multispectral energized membrane. Uh, the reason I did this because the T2 version does require, I believe, five out of five like hull upgrades or something like that. So again, just the thing I do like about this fit is you can upgrade a lot of stuff across the board. Um, so we're using the compact multispectral just to increase the resistances across the board. Damage control is pretty obvious. Increased tank. Um, if you get really good at this fit, you can actually you could probably swap out the compact multispectral for uh, another damage control, like a drone damage amplifier. Um, so you could probably swap that out and just increase your drone damage. But you have to be have pretty good piloting skills in order to to pull that off. And in the rigs, we have the medium auxiliary nano pump. So this just increases our the amount that we're healing per cycle. Uh, there is another one that increases like that reduces the cycle time so you heal more faster but it does harm our capacitor so i just left this as is and we're we are running two capacitor control circuits so one is a two and one is a one and so there is some wiggle room for upgrades like i said you can you can increase this to a two i believe you can increase this to a two as well so again the reason why i like this is because there is a lot of room for upgrades for people that are alpha and recently upgraded or if they're willing to spend like let's say 150 million isk to upgrade the the battery as well as some other stuff so there is a lot of room for upgrades but i just wanted to show you guys like literally the bare bare minimum required uh, in order to run these level four missions uh, this is my actual fit everything is identical except this is just a medium armor repair too which honestly isn't really needed like i said before and the medium drones are a t2 i don't have the skills for t2 heavies yet but uh, this is mainly just to increase damage uh, and save us some time so i'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and jump outside i'll show you guys how i organized the drones and kind of having some drones for backups as well and then we'll go ahead and run some missions all right so let's go ahead and undock uh, the reason i'm actually calling this ship the uh, cmr4 it just stands for cheap mission runner 4 uh, for the most part so even though the fit only has uh, i believe 150 megabits of bandwidth for drones you should definitely add more so when you dock you should see this the caldari navy wasp the ogres and all that stuff so i will say is this so just click on the wasp it doesn't matter right click move drone i have a lot of drone groups i actually need to clean this up but if you go to new group um so because it's the wasp we'll call this one uh kinetic if i can spell it correctly so we have that group so connect it kinetic is down there so we'll drop the other wasp we'll also drop the um vespas as well as the Hornet, because those are all the kinetic versions. So now you have your kinetic group here, which the two heavies, the two mediums, and the light. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with the ogre. So we'll go ahead and move it. We'll start a new group. We'll call this one, we'll just call it Therm for short. You can do Ken, Therm, whichever ones you want to do. And we'll just drag the rest in here like so. So cool. Now we have two groups with the five set of drones uh, right next to each other. All right, so I actually redocked and add a couple more drones. I do recommend at least adding um, one more medium drone of each type. So one thermal, one kinetic, as well as one thermal, one kinetic light drone. Since those drones seem to be focused a bit more often, uh, your heavy drones, if they get focused, there tends to be enough time and they have enough tank to survive. But sometimes your medium and light drones can just surprisingly just get blown up or focused really hard. So I like to keep a couple extras. So let's say you have your kinetics out and you lose a Vespa. Um, it dies. What you could do is just drag the Vespa into that group and then be able to kick it out or you just kick it out. Um, and then when you actually recall the drones, like in between gates, you can just right click the Vespa, add it to the drone group that you had uh, before. All right, so when you first enter a pocket, the first thing you wanna do, or a mission spot, whatever, uh, is drop a mobile tractor unit and start orbiting it. If you don't have a mobile tractor unit and you're not trying to collect anything, just orbit any anything in that thing, even the acceleration gate. Um, you, might have, you guys might've heard before, focus the big ships first because they deal the most damage, but we're actually speed taking everything. So we should be able to avoid the damage from most of the ships. Um, we actually wanna focus the small ships first. So when you first go in, the first thing you want to do is, is start orbiting your mobile tractor unit on at least 25 kilometers. 30 is ideal, but if in case you're going to run into something, uh, 25 is usually the minimum. So the whole point is that we want to get above 75% of our maximum speed. So in this case, I believe it's over 1,000. 
meters a second. And at that speed, we should be able to dodge most of the damage that the uh, battleships and even some of the battle cruisers that are setting at us. So we're actually focusing the smaller ships because the biggest threat to us are honestly frigates with uh, usually web of fires because they're going to slow us down. We're going to be easier to hit. Um, so we're actually focusing the frigates, the destroyers, because those are the ones that tend to focus the drones the most. And the drones are our main source of damage. And if we're spending a lot of time uh, recalling our drones, we're actually losing damage. So as you can see here, these are just kind of some cool visuals, but also just showing that uh, even though there's five or six battleships on grid that we're just avoiding most of the damage, so we're not having to worry about it too much. Um, like I said before, this fit is just not very good at getting a lot of uh, killing battle cruisers very quickly, or sorry, battleships very quickly. So this mission did have a ton of battleships, so this mission did take us a very long time. But it's just go to show that um, even some of the missions that do seem scary with a lot of battleships uh, are doable. Uh, as you can see here, uh, our drone starts getting focused and I wasn't really paying attention. It almost dies. It gets super close. Uh, but this is another good reason why we're running the drone navigation computer. Because of that increased speed, it can get back to our bay quickly. It manages to survive. We end up just replacing it with one of those uh, extra Vespa 2s that I mentioned before. And we're able to just keep up our damage and still maintain uh, our drone groups. Uh, this next part, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're down in our armor, no big deal. Uh, we're just going to cycle that armor repair once to kind of keep us topped off. So uh, there's, only, like I said, only a couple times where I really had to uh, cycle that armor repair. And that's when I got ships spawned nearly on top of me. And I really had to cycle it uh, four, five, six times. But other than that, I never really saw a threat. All right. And just as some bonus footage for you guys. So this is actually a mission I was doing before I kind of did my official recording. But I was as I was running the mission uh, to make sure that the fit would work. Um, this guy actually showed up and I just started recording this Nurgle showed up in my pocket started attacking my MTU and thus this made him immediately suspect and The best thing you could do in that case is just to go to your MTU and scoop it and take all the loot inside um, That that's the best thing you can do and it doesn't put you in any kind of uh, position to, to get harmed by him or anything like that Because if you attack him while he's suspect he is free to attack you so that's kind of 101 in high sec never attack a ship that's blinking uh, because right now they're just trying to bait you into attacking. And so once I did that, I actually got added by this different guy about five seconds later after I scooped it. Kind of weird timing, right? And he says, hey, uh, have you seen this uh, Nurgle flying around uh, that's uh, suspect baiting people? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you attack him real quick? I'll come by and help. And of course, I didn't attack it because I knew he was up to no good. And he's like, all right, I'm on my way. And so he shows up and, the, and these two guys really sell it. So obviously these guys are working together, whether it's an alt account uh, of, a, of one guy or whether it's two people just trying to suspect bait people but these guys like really sell it he's messaging me the whole time he's like hey can you attack it or can you do something like during the fight the guy even sent out drones to attack the nurgle which uh, if you guys didn't know the nurgle is an armor tank ship uh, at some point i did lock it up just to see if it actually did have like have low health just to just to wonder but its shields were down but of course its armor wasn't so um, these guys really went all out when it came to suspect baiting. So uh, this, again, is just kind of a word of warning for you guys that if you guys are running missions or doing anything high sec related and you don't want to engage in PvP, never engage a ship that is uh, blinking like this. Or don't buy into these guys trying to sell you that, you know, they're trying to hunt suspect baiters in the area. All right, I also wanted to show this mission too, which is the very tail end, uh, the last pocket of the Dread Pirate Scarlet uh, mission. A lot of people like this mission because it's easily one of the most blitzable missions um, in the game. Uh, we're not able to kill her in the second pocket because we just simply don't have the damage, but we can kill her in this pocket. It was a bit difficult because she is pretty far away outside of our initial locking range, so we did have to get somewhat close, also run perpendicular to the bad guys so we're not getting uh, hard focused or getting shot up too much. Uh, we are getting scrammed, but as long as we're not getting uh, webbed, I'm perfectly happy with that. We're able to eventually pull range. So uh, missions like this that are blitzable for the most part, they, it is doable, but uh, most missions that do have a lot of battleships that are, require you to kill a lot of things, um, this is not the best ship for. And again, the whole point of this was just to make a really, really inexpensive level four mission runner. Um, I would argue this is the best bang for your buck ship if you're just strictly comparing like damage versus isk, but because the damage is so low, it takes incredibly long to clear a lot of missions. So it's no different than if you're trying to play uh, EVE Online with a $100 laptop. Like, can it run it? Yes, but is it gonna be efficient or a super enjoyable experience and that's seamless? Not likely. So uh, it will take a long time, but if some of you guys just want a bit of a challenge or that have really, really low amounts of ISK and wanna try this out, you definitely can. So again, I just wanna thank you guys so much for all the support you guys have given me up to this point. Uh, congrats on the people that have won the skin giveaway. And I really look forward to 
releasing more uh, content for you guys here in the near future.